Hey, good morning, it's Miss Lynn and Farmer Larry at Fern Valley Farm, and today we're gonna to share a special, special recipe with you. Um, I have a friend who needs a little cheering up, so I thought I am gonna make one of my favorite things. They're called Italian Amaretta cookies. And as many of you that know us know that Farmer Larry and I love Italy, all things Italian. So we started making this cookie a little while ago, and everybody, everybody that eats it loves it. So you guys, this is well worth your time to watch. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to start by using, and we give you some special secret tips that, um, that we have to make it absolutely scrumptious, delicious. The first thing we're gonna do is you're gonna take two pans, two cookie sheets. You need two cookie sheets because if you just use one, it could easily burn on the bottom. Another little secret too is parchment paper. This is one of the things you have to have in your kitchen Yes, I know, many of you may not have it, but you really need it. So one of the secrets to using parchment paper, which makes things not stick, is when you first put it down, you wanna use a little bit of spray to make the parchment paper stick, okay? Because it is kind of floppy, it kind of, so this helps it keep it down right in the pan. We're gonna use two pans today because that's gonna keep it from burning on the bottom. So we'll set those aside. The next thing you're going to need, which you may not have, but you need to get, is some almond flour. There's two things in this recipe that you may not already own. And we like to use things that you have in your kitchen, but I'm telling you, it's well worth it. Almond flour. This is almond flour. It's gluten-free. I'm gluten-free. A lot of people we know are gluten-free, but it tastes fabulous. You have to buy it, and I would buy a bag so you can make a couple of batches because once you eat this cookie, you're going to want more. The other thing you're gonna to need to invest in is almond extract. Okay, this is just like vanilla extract and all the other extracts that you have in your kitchen, but this is what you need for your recipe. So this is the flavor of the amaretti cookie that you're gonna to need to make it wonderful. Now, I will let you look at the almond flour. If you can look down inside this bag, you'll see that it tends to clump because almond flour has moisture in it. It has a lot of protein richness in it, but what you're gonna to wanna to do to keep it really light and fluffy is get that old sifter out. I know, maybe your mom gave you one. I know Farmer Larry had to pick one up for me. This is the old fashioned town that does this. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure out my almond flour here, and by using the sifter, it's gonna keep it light and fluffy. So, the first thing we're gonna need is we're gonna need one cup of sugar, just pour that right on in. And then we're gonna need a cup and a quarter, no, I'm sorry, two and a quarter cups of almond flour. Now remember too, whenever you're measuring flour, you wanna make sure it's very light in there. I like to, you know, just barely scoop it in, level it off. We're gonna need this one cup, we're gonna need two cups. So I'm gonna go ahead and, like I said, you're gonna to wanna to get a bag of this because I promise you, you're gonna make more than one batch of these cookies when everybody loves them. So that's two, and then we'll do a quarter. We pour it right into our sifter because the sifter's gonna take the clumps out of that almond flour and make it even smoother, okay? So you just, this is great for kids too because I know many of you have never seen a crank before, never had crank windows, all that stuff, but sifting is wonderful. It, they can see how it works because it comes right out the bottom. Wonderful, wonderful way to do it. So we're just sifting some of those clumps out of the flour. Now, I'll tell you, if you don't have a sifter yet, you can go to the store to get one. There are alternative ways to do it. I know because I've used them all. So don't worry that you don't have to, a sifter, don't let this keep you from um, making these cookies, but I will tell you, it does help make them even better. Okay, we've preheated our oven to 300 degrees. Our oven takes a while to preheat, so if yours does, you wanna make sure you do that first. Okay, and we've got all the flour out. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in, we're gonna add one pinch of salt. Now a pinch is the same as one eighth of a um, teaspoon, but I just take a big pinch, put it in. Again, if you don't have a sifter, what you can do is take your whisk and you can whisk things together. The important part is that we're mixing all this together before we add the liquid, okay? So many times in, in recipes you'll see that the dry ingredients are mixed separately from the, water, the wet ingredients for a reason. You wanna incorporate these so you don't have all the sugar in one part of the cookie batter. Okay, so we're gonna just mix those together. 
That's all it takes, super easy. Whisk it together, set it aside. And then we're gonna need two eggs, such a simple recipe, but just the egg whites, okay? So many of you may not have separated an egg, so I'm gonna show you a couple different ways to do it. I always learn to do it like this and kind of go back and forth, back and forth. I will tell you that the kids in our cooking class do this, so you can do it too, I promise. And then we'll just put this on our dog treat bowl because these are going to our puppy dogs. The other way to do it is, you know, you always have clean hands when you work, right? So the other way to do it is to take it right in your hand like this. Let the whites of the, of the egg just go through your fingers and eventually all you'll have left is the yolk and that can go just like that. Of course, then you need a towel to wash your hands off with because you know how that is. So, then you run back into the picture frame and we're gonna give these to our puppy dogs and so we're gonna set those aside. We're gonna take our egg whites and put them right into our mixer. Now remember, when you whip egg whites, there's a secret to that, and that is that everything has to be spotless. Not that it's spotless already, but when any little crumb or anything will keep the egg whites from whipping. So you wanna make sure everything is perfectly clean, no oils or anything in there. We're gonna pour it right in here. We're gonna add a quarter teaspoon of lemon juice. Now there's lots of ways to do lemon juice. I love fresh squeezed lemon juice, but sometimes you can use the other kind. And we're just gonna do a quarter teaspoon which is just basically a drip. Don't get carried away, okay? Just a quarter teaspoon, be careful, don't overfill it, and goes right in. We're gonna whip these babies up. One of the other secrets to this cookie recipe is how much you whip the egg whites. So I'm gonna go ahead and whip them. I'll be back in just a second. Okay, we're back. What you didn't see was that I stopped the uh, whipping to double check it a couple times. So let me show you what the perfect wick egg whites for this cookie mix look like. I'm gonna go ahead and take the bowl down and let you see. Remember with egg whites or whipping cream or anything you're whipping with a big machine, you can turn your back for a couple of seconds, turn back and it's overdone. So you have to really watch it carefully. So here's what the egg whites look like. They're not dry. And what we wanna do is we wanna see what we call the eagle's beak. That means when you hold your whisk up, it looks like a bird's beak. Pretty easy. I'm a visual learner, so I have to kinda of do it like that. So this is what I call the eagle's beak when it's just a little bit of drippy, but not too drippy. And then you know it's the perfect, perfect consistency. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our favorite rubber spatula, which is another critical tool for kitchen. I wish I had 10 of these because I could use them all. And we're gonna just put in, just lightly put our not overly done um, egg whites into the dry mixture. We're gonna add the, la the last of our wet ingredients, which is a half a teaspoon of the almond extract. Don't over, oh, you know what? Change that. I like it real almondy, so I'm gonna add a little extra. Because I found that's even better. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our rubber spatula, and all you do is mix it together, okay? So we're gonna mix our dry ingredients with our wet ingredients. Not a big deal. Don't worry about squishing the egg whites because this is not a meringue. This is, this is just a cookie, okay? So we can go ahead and mix it all together. You can use your hands if you want to. It's a little bit wet, so when you mix it together, just keep mixing, keep mixing. I do want to point out that this is one of my favorite recipes. One of my favorite sites is Love and Olive Oil, which is a, a website for fabulous recipes. So you guys go out and check them out. This is their original recipe and I just love it. In fact, I love all their recipes. So we're gonna mix this up and just keep stirring it until all the wet is incorporated with the dry. If you wanna get your hands in there, you can. You know, remember, this is great for kiddos because they love touching and feeling stuff. Now, what it calls for is a cookie measurer, a cookie scoop. I don't have a cookie scoop, so guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna use my tablespoon because I do want some consistency to the size of the cookies. And last but not least, we're gonna roll them in some powdered sugar. Oh yes. So I'm just gonna take a scoop of um, tablespoon, tablespoonful of the dough. I'm gonna just roll it together 
into a ball, okay? It just forms into a ball pretty easily. I'm gonna roll that ball in the powdered sugar and I'm gonna put it about two inches apart on my cookie sheet. It helps to put some powdered sugar on your hands just to keep um, um, the dough from sticking to your hands. Okay, so we're gonna do it again. You get about 24 cookies out of this recipe and I gotta tell you, you wish it was about 48, so you might wanna double the recipe when you do it, but we're gonna just put them in there. So this is, that's all there is to this cookie. It's super, super easy. All it is is egg whites, flour, a little bit of sugar, and that wonderful almond extract. I'm gonna put those in there, roll them out. Set them about two inches apart on our, on our double-sided cookie sheet. And once we get them all rolled out, we're gonna pop them in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes, okay? Do not overcook these. And so we're gonna pop them in the oven, we'll check them. You know, so many ovens are different temperatures that even if you set it at 300, it may be a little higher, maybe a little low. So we always, I like to undercook, check, and turn it on for a few extra minutes if we have to. So better to be not overdone. So I'm gonna come back to you in a few minutes and I'll show you our finished product. Yummy. See ya.